what will change here, um, and it looks like I've already changed this, but I'm going to go ahead and I go into insert. Okay, let's, by default, this would have been commented out, FTPD banner. And what we want to do is uncomment it. And then welcome to Feisty Find 7. You can put a message here, contact Charles Germany. So, um, we'll just say, hi, mom. Hi, mom. There you go. And I'm going to hit escape because I want to save. Now, remember, I need root privileges to do this. So I use sudo. I'm going to hit X. That'll write the file and save it. And if I want to check it, um, I'll just pipe it to less. The pipe symbol, remember, lets you take input from one command and pipe it to another command. Or lets you take the output from one command, pipe it to another, another command as input. And less just lets us selectively scroll through. So anonymous FTP. We'll go down, and our banner message is there. So um, let's go ahead and exit out. Now, whenever you change these configuration files, um, you know pretty much anything that you modify in, under Linux is going to modify these configuration files, these text-based configuration files. When you do that, you usually need to restart the daemon. So since we just modified the very secure FTP server, VSFTPD, or the FTP daemon, we're going to need to restart that. So I'm going to go to ETC, and init D is where you'll find soft links to uh, most of your executables, and VSFTPD, the daemon, and I'm going to feed it the command restart. And okay, I just restarted the FTP daemon. It says okay, okay, so let's go ahead and test it out. And up here, I'll just FTP and I'll use the loopback 127001. And here's my message banner. Hi, mom. Contact Charles Germany. Alternatively, if you want multiple lines of text, um, like when I what I have on Frankenstein, it's, it's just an external file. You can have it go out and read an external file and, and load that text in there. But here, just a quick and easy way or quick and dirty way to put this in the VSFTPD conf uh, configuration file. So I'm going to log in as anonymous which is all that I have enabled, and password, and I'll do an ls, and here's my death ray and fusion, fission, fusion bomb, and secrets right there. And I'll go ahead and exit. And now, the other, um, there's two more directories we're interested in while we're talking about configuration files. I'm going to go to boot, and notice here that I have a folder called grub. You'll see grub up here, I'm moving the cursor. And here, you'll see, a f in, in this case, your configuration files. In Fedora, it's there's grub.conf. What Ubuntu did is they kind of modified it. I'm not 100% sure why, but, you know, different strokes, different folks. So if you look at menu list, um, these are actually your startup options. And you can modify this file and give yourself more or less time you know, the number of seconds when it starts. So this, this is equivalent to uh, grub.conf under Fedora or the boot INI file. You can change your menu names if you want to load it in the text editor and modify it. Um, you know, where directories are, in this case, the physical drive and the partition, um, the title that appears in the menu, the splash screen. So that's a very important configuration file. And if you ever need to reinstall the bootloader, all you have to do is just type grub. Go into this directory, type grub, and that actually launches an executable. All right, I'm going to go back to the root directory. The other one we're interested in, because of our web server, our Apache web server, is the directory var. So we're going to go into var, and we'll list a few things here. The main one we're interested in is www. Our, that's the World Wide Web, or our Apache folder. So we'll go there. And let's lift the contents editor. And this is actually what you saw. By default, um, the permissions are set so that we can view files in this directory. It's equivalent to turning on directory browsing in Internet Information Services um, on 2003 or 2008. Um, what we want to do, we'll just create a quick uh, index.html file in this folder. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way to do that, we'll sudo, we'll vim. And we'll give it a name, and I'm going to get I for insert, and HTML tag, and we'll add a head tag. 
And of course, you would load your own web pages in here. This is where I have networkingprogramming.com. We'll call this test page. Let's add our closing tags. And that's hex f f f f f f f is hexadecimal for white, and all zeros is hexadecimal for black. We'll put that in the body tag. We need to close the body tag, and we need to close the HTML tag, and. Just add some centers here, and we'll add a few lines. And let's go ahead and change the font here. So, and HTML is not really case sensitive. You just want to make sure you have your closing tags, but we'll make it Arial. And let's make it large. And let's tell you what, let's put that inside the center tag. And doesn't have to be lowercase, but just my obsessive compulsive personality wants that to be consistent. And Fly the skull and crossbones here. Arg, pirates, we be, but this will be our test page. Let me exit out, and I want to hit X to save. And in this case, I want to make sure that the appropriate permissions are on that page. And so other has read, and the group has read. And that'll be our Apache user group, so we're good there. Um, there's our index.html. And the default file, let me go over here. And let me go over here and Arg Pirates we be. And there's our pirate web page. Okay, um we've tested those items. Let me let me let me use this prompt on here. It's already open, it's already sized appropriately. Okay, we're gonna recurse up, go back to our default directory, go back to Etsy. Um one other configuration file we'll look at, and that is Samba. Um, this is how we can do, um, you know, some network shares. And actually, there's host allow, host and I, our, our host files are here too. Um, hmm, let's do Samba. And we'll lo list the contents of Samba. What we're interested in is samba.conf. So again, I'm going to sudo and vim samba.conf and these would be directories that we share out that would be visible on a Windows network so we could use our Linux machine as a Windows file server and our, our Windows machines would pretty much be happy they would just consider it one of the you know one of the boys or